An explosive discovery. The investigation underway now in Ankeny after an eight year old found a bomb in her neighborhood. And finally, chances for showers out there as well as the possibility of a few thunderstorms. I'll let you know where they will track and who could even see some stronger storms. Freebies at pharmacies, the special prizes for getting your final COVID-19 shot. And raise your glass, you soon will be able to grab a beer or wine at Iowa Games. This is Iowa's news leader, KCCI 8 News This Morning. And hey, happy Friday. Thanks so much for choosing us to start your day and Merry Christmas, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right, we both uh, came into the studio and we're like, oh, uh, oh. Uh, yep, we did that. We definitely Christmas did. in June. Yeah, we did that. I feel like twice already. Yeah, probably. Yikes. Uh, Jason, <laughs> but it's summer and it's hot and uh, yeah. I don't know what else to say. We're, we're, we're expecting rain and it's not even going to cool us down. Yeah, no winter a, time for sure. Yeah, at least it's not snowing. I mean, if we're going to be talking Christmas, <laughs> exactly. Uh, at least it's not snowing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, you can see we've got chances for storms later on this afternoon. Our fate lies off to the west right now, but across the state we are quiet for the time being. If you got plans to head out to the pool, do plan on a scattered shower or thunderstorm throughout the day. It is going to be warming up though, back to 88 already by noon. And, and we will keep it a whole lot cloudier out there today than we have been for the past couple days. So check out your weekend planner. Uh, we do have less humidity on Saturday. We're going to knock about 10 degrees off of our dew points. So looking at a much more comfortable day on Saturday. Heat returns, humidity returns though. Guys, we'll be back in the middle 90s on Sunday. Well, there we go, right back to it. Thank you, Jason. And right now, Ankeny investigators are looking for whoever laid a bomb in the middle of the street. An eight-year-old girl is the one who found the explosive device. Could you imagine? Well, police are calling her a hero for saving the neighborhood from potential disaster. Yeah, KCCI's Bo Bowman is live in Ankeny. And Bo, this could have been much worse. Oh, much worse, TCS. She found it here on Southeast Waywind Drive. Eight year old Maya Buffington originally thought it was something else laying in the middle of the road. Something in the street that I thought was a dead squirrel. And then I went to go look at it, and it, and then it wasn't a dead squirrel. It was something wrapped up in a tape and cardboard. Ankeny police notified neighbors they had reported hearing multiple explosions over the past few months. Police aren't saying what exactly the device was. It comes a little more than three months after Ankeny police found and detonated a pipe bomb outside a polling site. Nothing's been ruled out, but we don't have anything that points directly that it's connected, but we don't have anything that says it's not. And that could have been easy, an explosion on unheard of kids, so it's just... It's crazy when you don't think about in this neighborhood going to happen. And if police want anyone with information to go ahead and give them the call, the number is on the bottom of your screen there. It's 515-286-3333. We're live in Ankeny. Bo Bowman, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. Bo, thank you. And a Tama woman accused of threatening to blow up the Wapalo uh, County Attorney's Office is out on bond. Sierra Smith was arrested Wednesday in court records show on May 25th. She told employees, quote, this place needs needs blown up and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, she's charged with threat of an explosive device and a Des Moines police car is a mangled mess this morning after a high speed pursuit and police say a 16 year old driver and four other teens in the car who led officers from Des Moines to Huxley yesterday. They top speeds of 100 miles an hour. The chase ended when the driver lost control, hit a light pole, and crushed a police cruiser. No one was hurt, but police are concerned it involved that many young people. I think they were all pretty surprised it ended the way they did. You know, one thing we see with a lot of kids um, is that they don't think beyond that, that immediate moment. The driver was arrested. Des Moines police say the pursuit to the Huxley area is within their department policy. This morning, online classes at DMAC are canceled again. It comes after that paralyzing cyber attack we've been reporting all week. In-person classes are still a go at all locations. The school says the IT team is making progress toward restoring the school's computer network. No timeline, though, on when everything will be back to normal. Now to Iowa's COVID-19 vaccine rollout. How about some freebies at a few metro pharmacies? Places in Beaverdale are offering special offers and discounts if you're fully vaccinated. 
The business community announced new immunity cards you can use. So just get your final COVID shot at any of these three pharmacies on your screen right there now through September to qualify. Now the new incentive comes as vaccination rates drop across Iowa. I was now ranked 21st in the nation and just two weeks ago we were 17th in the vaccine rollout. Health officials have been battling vaccine hesitancy and fear we've hit a plateau. A reminder though, Governor Kim Reynolds wants three fourths of Iowa adults vaccinated by the 4th of July. And right now over half of Iowa adults have completed their vaccine series. More than 1.4 million Iowans are fully vaccinated and more than 2.8 million doses have been administered. Right now, Polk County authorities are asking for your help finding a strip club shooter. They say someone opened fire into a crowd at Big Earl's gold mine back in early May. A bullet struck a man and seriously hurt him. If you know who is involved, you can call Crime Stoppers and stay anonymous. That number is 515-223-1400. Des Moines police are also looking for a shooter who fired um, at a man during the afternoon at Southwest 9th and Hackley here. Officers say the shooting victim and the gunman were in a van talking to each other before shots rang out. The victim then ran from the van and was shot. Police say the person who was shot is expected to be okay. Well, starting this fall, you can grab a beer or a glass of wine at Iowa Hawkeye home football games. They'll start with the season opener against Indiana on September 4th. The pilot program will extend to all Iowa athletic events. Iowa's athletic director says the alcohol sales will hopefully lift spirits at games and enhance the fan experience. Now, the University of Iowa is the latest state school to allow alcohol sales at athletic events. We told you back in 2019 at the UNI, at that UNI rather, started allowing alcohol sales in the UNI Dome and McLeod Center. Now, alcohol sales were available only during football and men's basketball games as well. And Drake University started allowing alcohol sales at home basketball games in 2018. They were the first Division I athletic program in the state to do so. Good to know. Uh, I mean, Jason, I'm not sure if you are a fan of uh, the sports, but uh, how about beer this morning? <laughs> sports. <laughs> Let me tell you, sports. It's your I, thing, I huh? love them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's kind of cool. I, I, I liked the line uh, that uh, beer is going to lift people's spirits because it's kind of like a pun. Come shout on. out to our producers. Yeah, shout out to our producers. That was gold. Oh, that was Alyssa gold. and Alex. Thank you, Anna Lena. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, if you're doing sports outside today, well, drink a whole lot of water. You're going to need it. Or if you're heading out to Altoona, they got some pretty cool roller coasters from what I hear. A brand new one. Uh, you can see it out there right now. That temperature at 73 degrees. A little bit of a breeze. Otherwise, it's just humid out there. That dew point at 66. So your forecast, uh, your roller coaster cast, maybe we should call it, up in the upper 80s this afternoon. And again, we'll have a chance for a scattered shower or a thunderstorm. Otherwise, just plan on it being warm out there. 92 the high on the day in the Metro, 86 for Fort Dodge. Creston coming in at 87. And look at that precipitation trend. We've got that rain chance today, but if we don't get it today, that crunchy grass that you've got out front, well, it might be getting uh, a whole lot crunchier as we have got much drier days ahead. All right, Jason, thank you for that. Let's take another <laughs> look over in traffic. Uh, uh, th this is going to be I-235 at 7th uh, Street, and you can see traffic again is pretty light out there. Uh, definitely want to grab those sunglasses, though, because the sun will be all up in your face, all up in your business. But no crashes to report at this time or any delays throughout the metro. It's mostly in the green. We're having a good morning there. But just a heads up, though, well, for... Anyone really, uh, all the drivers out there, you won't be able to take part of Merle Hay Road this weekend. The DOT is closing down the road between Hickman and, and Urbandale, so it can be repaved. A detour will be set up using 48th Street and work should be done by 5 a.m. on Monday. Polk County Attorney John Sarcone is calling it a career after 30 years. He wants to spend more time with his family. Sarcone talked exclusively with KCCI Cynthia Fodor. He says he is most proud of connecting victims with liaisons and setting up an elder abuse unit. He also touts the fact that there are more women and minorities in the county attorney's office. I always looked at it as, am I going to leave things better than when I found it? And uh, I can truly say that what I found when I started and what I'm leaving behind, it's much better than, than when I started out. 
Yeah, what more can you ask for? Two people have announced they're going to run for Sarcone seat. Laura Rowan is the assistant Polk County attorney and Kimberly Graham is a former candidate for the U.S. Senate. Well, right now, a reward fund is growing to help find a missing Montezuma boy. 11 year old Xavier Harrelson vanished without trace two weeks ago. No additional searches have been planned. Police say they hope a reward will get people to come forward with new information in this search. If you'd like to donate to the reward, contact the Montezuma State Bank. It's now 540 rising from the ashes. The big fundraiser helping a Pleasantville church recover from a devastating fire. A taste of Iowa nice. Essential Iowa barbecue chef is in New York to show America how to be kind during the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we approach summertime, we're seeing more sun and more gorgeous sunsets. Oh, look at those colors. Mm -hmm. Dave Brown sent this to our new local page. Well, cotton candy clouds there. Looks like heaven in those clouds over Jester Park. By the way, we're seeing about 16 hours of daylight as we get closer to summer solstice. <laughs> this is Iowa.